Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness! No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon, therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Matthew 6, 19, 34. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. It is he who made the flowers and gave the birds their song. In the beauty of nature, you can learn more of God's wisdom than scholars know. He wrote a message for you even in the petals of the lilies. He could have provided only the necessities of life, but God was not content to do merely that. He filled the earth, space, and the firmament with traces of beauty to show you the thoughts of love He has towards you. The beauty of all created things is but a glimpse of the splendor of His glory. If He lavished such infinite mastery on the things of nature for your happiness and joy, can you doubt that He will grant you every needed blessing if you give yourself to Him to do His work? You need not be anxious for tomorrow when you serve one who knows the end from the beginning. The events of tomorrow hidden from your eyes are open to the sight of the Almighty. When we take into our hands the management of things with which we have to do and depend upon our own wisdom for success, we are taking a burden that God has not given us and are trying to bear it without His aid. We are taking upon ourselves the responsibility that belongs to God. By putting them thus in the place of truth, we may indeed have anxiety and anticipate danger and loss, for it is certain to befall us. But when we believe that God loves us and means to do us good, we shall cease to worry ourselves. In a loving Father our troubles and torments will disappear, for our will shall be merged in the will of God. Christ has made no promise of help to those who are taking up the burdens of tomorrow. He said, My grace is sufficient for you. But as the manna given in the wilderness, his grace is bestowed daily for the need of the day. Like the hosts of Israel in their pilgrim life, we shall find morning by morning the bread of heaven for the day's supply. One day alone is ours, and during this day we are to live for God. For this day we are to place in the hand of Christ in solemn service all our purposes and plans, casting upon Him all our care, for He cares for us. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. In returning and rest shall be your salvation, in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. If you will seek the Lord and be converted every day, if you will of your own spiritual choice be free and joyous in God, if with gladsome consent of heart to His gracious call, you come wearing the yoke of Christ, the yoke of obedience and service, all your murmurings will be stilled, all your difficulties will be removed, all the perplexing problems that now confront you will be solved. The people who listened to the words of Christ were still eagerly awaiting some announcement of an earthly kingdom, while Jesus unfolded to them the treasures of the kingdom of heaven. The chief anxiety in many minds was, how can we best secure earthly riches? How can we secure a high position in the world? Jesus showed how by making the things of the world their supreme anxiety, 
they were but resembling the heathen nations around them, living as though there were no God with his tender care around his creatures. All these things, said Jesus, do the people of the world seek after. Your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. I have come to reveal the kingdom of love and justice and peace. Open your hearts to receive this kingdom and make its service your chief interest. Though it is a spiritual kingdom, fear not that your need for this life will be overlooked. If you give yourselves to the service of God who has all power in heaven and earth, he will provide for your necessities. Jesus does not release us from the necessity of effort, but he teaches that we are to make him first and last and best in everything. We are to engage in no business, follow no pursuit, seek no pleasure. That would hinder the outworking of his righteousness in our character and life. Everything we do is to be done heartily as to the Lord. In his life on earth, Jesus, by his own example, taught the lesson of carefulness in the small affairs of life and also of the sanctity of labor. He did not shun the humble tasks. By his labor as a carpenter, he dignified the laborer's occupation and showed how he regards honest toil and a useful calling. If we follow his example, the promise that he will provide for us will be fulfilled. Whether poverty or wealth, whether sickness or health, whether in the simplicity of childhood or the wisdom of old age, all are provided for in the promise of His grace. The eternal arms of God are around the soul that turns to Him for aid, however feeble that soul may be. The treasures of the hills shall perish, but the soul that lives for God shall abide with Him. The world passes away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. The city of God will open its golden gates to receive those who, while on earth, learn to lean upon God for guidance and wisdom, comfort, and hope. Amid losses and afflictions, the songs of angels will welcome them there, and to them will be given the fruit from the tree of life. The mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, says the Lord that has mercy on thee. May the Lord bless thee and keep thee in peace even today in the midst of thy sorrow, pain, and affliction, knowing beforehand that he has never failed, does not fail, and will not fail in thy life. Be guided by his gentle voice and live a life dedicated to the one who eternally loves you.